I want to talk about a new feature that landed recently in Firefox 68 and is also available in most modern browsers at this point and coming to more soon. What we have here is an image gallery that scrolls sideways uh, and we can see the various images here. And what I want to do is make it so that these images snap into the center of the window. There's always one of them that snaps into place in the center when we scroll. The way that we're going to do that is on the scroll container, you can see that our figure has overflow on it, so we're getting that side scroll. Um, we can set a scroll type, and this type of X, that's an axis, so we can set that to X or Y. Uh, we can also set that to inline or block, or both if we want to scroll on two axes. By default, that doesn't do anything unless we add uh, alignment on elements uh, that we want to snap into specific places. So let's say on the images here, we actually want them to snap to the center. Um, and let's just watch that happen. So there you go. There is scroll snapping to the center on a gallery. So with the default, I can hit these certain points where nothing is centered. Um, and that's because the default strictness of the snap type is proximity, um, which we can write to be explicit about it. Um, but we're going to change that to mandatory. And when it's set to mandatory, you can see it's always going to snap something to the center unless we're right at the edge. There's no middle points that we can pause at. So mandatory is sometimes useful if we really want things always to snap into place. It's also a little risky if we have things that might overflow and we want to be able to get to that middle ground. So play around with it, see what works for you. Let's look at an example that's a little bit more complex here. We have this page that scrolls and you can see we've got everything snapping to the start there. These cards snap to the start. I'd like a little bit of space around that. So what I'm going to do is add a scroll margin. Um, and this won't change the margin of the element on the page. It will just change the margin when we scroll to that element or when we snap to that element. So I'm going to add a 1M scroll margin. The syntax works the same as the margin syntax. Uh, so one or two or three or four values. And we can also do scroll margin top to be explicit. Um, and when we do that, you can see now we have that extra space. And that's going to work not only when we're using scroll snap, but also if we link down the page to something. So there I linked to the alignment card, and you can see it respects that scroll margin. We can take that same idea a little bit farther. If we have, say, a sticky header at the top of our page, let's look at that. Now the header is staying at the top, and that means when everything snaps into place, uh, it's really offset from where we want it to be. It's underneath that sticky header, and that's not going to work for us. So the other thing that we can do to create an offset uh, is create a, a scroll padding on the window itself. So let's do that. Scroll padding of, I think it's about that much. And there we go. As you can see now, we have a padding on the scroll window itself and then also a margin on each element. Um, and those two are adding up to give us uh, the exact amount of offset that we want. And again, those offsets are respected by links as well as snapping. Finally, like I mentioned, uh, we can go in multiple axes at once. If we want to scroll both vertically and horizontally, we can do that. Um, here I have a mandatory snap point uh, in both axes. Uh, and I'm going to set these to snap to the center. We don't need that scroll margin anymore. And you can see now on both axes of the scrolling, uh, it's going to try and snap cards to the center. And that can sometimes, the UX can be a little complicated to work with, but I'm sure you'll find something you like if you play around enough. And the really nice thing about this feature is it degrades entirely gracefully, because you'll see what happens if a browser doesn't support it. Uh, we still get that smooth scroll that we're used to. And really, it's a progressive enhancement uh, that nobody's going to notice if it's missing. There are a couple more properties that you can use here. Um, they're not as well supported. But again, play around, see what works for you. All of it is great uh, as a progressive enhancement. It degrades really gracefully. I think you should start using it right away. Have fun.